Hey everyone, so in my previous video I've shown you that how we can find hidden parameters and how we can dive deep into the application by finding parameters on authenticated endpoints, right? Now in this video, as you guys have demanded, I'm going to show you how we can bypass 403, by, uh, 403 uh, status code, how we can bypass 403 endpoints basically, right? But before going into this video, if you are new to our channel and if you haven't checked out our website yet, which is bepractical.tech, then you are missing a lot. Just go to your browser and type bpractical.tech in your browser and you will be redirected to our website right as you can see over here we have lots of contents related to cyber security and web development like over here as you can see there's iframe injection there's csrf uh, how to install xamp in ubuntu sql injection and lot of things right and the most important important part of our website is that you have awesome labs related to cyber security as well as web development so like right if i click on lab over here and you'll see that we have currently tens of labs on account takeovers now account takeover is a severe vulnerability that allows an attacker to hack into anyone's account by abusing the web application right in this particular labs you will learn that how we can bypass how we can hack into uh, applications web application to for, to find account takeovers right so yeah go ahead and check this out and just one thing that this labs is absolutely free and the important thing is that each one of these labs are based on real world scenario which means there is a hacker who have actually found this vulnerability by doing the same stuff that you're gonna doing in this particular lab to solve it Right, so go ahead and just solve the lab and increase your cybersecurity skills. Right, so finally, let's get started for this video. Now, first of all, we need to discuss what exactly is status 403, right? So 403 is a web application status code, which basically means that this endpoint is uh, forbidden to the public users, right? We are going to see an example of it. For that, I have created a small uh, lab that I'm going to show you. So let me just open my Kali Linux. By the way, if you don't know how to install Kali Linux, then go ahead and watch my this video in which I've shown you that how you can install Kali Linux on Windows machine without the help of VMware or anything. So let me show you a simple code of why people use 403 and how actually it, it is implemented in the backend, right? So that we can understand it, the concept behind 403 with more clarity. So suppose we have this application. So I'm just gonna open it. Now, don't worry about this code. This code is actually quite simple and I'm going to uh, make you understand what this code simply means, right? So we have two endpoints. If someone visits a particular uh, application, the response will be welcome to the web application. If someone visits, tries to visit developer, then it is going to check whether the header host is equals to local host, right? Again, I'm going to show you and uh, tell you why this local host is over here, right? And if there's a uh, local host in the headers which means that it is going to execute some commands basically and it is going to send the output else if there is no uh, local host present in the host header then it's going to send 403 right so let us see what does this means so i'm just gonna run this tool uh, sudo node index.js let us just wait and as you can see it is started and here is the target url if I just copy this and if I paste it in the browser, so again, I'm going to open my web suit as well so that we can analyze the functionality from the hacker's perspective as well as the developer's perspective, right? So here we are, just wait for a few seconds and here we are. Now, let me just paste it, right? So I think I've started it, right? So there's no issue in it. Let me just check my IP address real quick so that we can be sure. So this is the IP address, right? And I'm just going to start it again. Let's paste this, hit enter. And as you can see, we got to the welcome to the web application, the code that was written here, that if you visit this endpoint, the slash, and nothing after that slash, then you will see this welcome to the web application, right? Now, if I try to visit the developers section, uh, I think it was developer, right? So it is showing that you are not authorized to access this page. Now, many times what happens is like, suppose there is a developer, then what they'll do basically, they'll have the access to that particular server in which they have deployed the web application, right? So they can simply access that particular application by typing localhost in the, in the server where the application is actually hosted. Like if you see here, if I type localhost, 
I'll be redirected to the same application. I'm not getting redirected because of my verb suit. So let me just show you. Like if I go to localhost from here, as you can see, again, I got to the welcome to the application, right? So the application is running same, but the difference over here that this IP is for the public user, right? So if I'm going to send someone the link of my application, I'm going to send them this IP. This is the public IP or I will send them the domain name, right? That will point to this IP. But if I'm a developer, then I can simply access my application by typing localhost in the same server, in the same server, right? So this point is very important in the same server. Like over here, if I type localhost, I am again seeing this application. But if someone else from another computer will try to access localhost they'll not see this application they have to type the ip address which i have just given over here right and now suppose if i go to the developer section you can see that this time it has not shown me 403 bypass or oh, sorry uh, 403 error right instead it showed me the data right now this implementation for the uh, securing the endpoint is quite weak, right? We are going to see that how we can bypass it and it's quite easy to bypass it. First of all, I hope that you have understood what is the difference between this particular localhost and the IP address and why uh, developers basically try to use 403 forbidden, right? Let us see what are the possible ways that we can bypass it, through which we can bypass it, right? Again, I'm going to just stop it and let's look at the code again. I'm just going to open the code and over here, you can see that the application is relying on the request headers, right? What the developer don't didn't realize that the header can be modified by anyone, right? This is why if someone tries to modify the header to localhost, there's a possibility that they will see the response, the uh, forbidden response, even though they are not in the same server, they are not in the same uh, server where the application is deployed, right? So let's see how we can abuse this. So if I type node, sudo node index.js right and I'm just going to intercept the request in the verb suit let us just intercept it let me maximize verb suit you can see that it is showing 403 forbidden but what will happen if I try to modify it from the IP address to localhost right if since we know that in the code in the backend the application is checking for the host header, right? And anyone can modify the host header like we just did over here using verb suit. And since that uh, implementation was very weak, the security was very weak, we will be easily able to bypass it. Now, if I click on send, as you can see, the response code, code got 200 OK, which means that we were successfully able to bypass 403 forbidden, right? And if I just copy this uh, and click on show response in browser, and paste it over here you can see that even we are uh, accessing the uh, server from outside the uh, main application main server still we are able to bypass 403 forbidden right so this is one of the ways that how we can bypass 403 forbidden now i wanted to dive deep into the theoretical concept so that you can understand how exactly 403 works and how exactly hackers can bypass it there are a lot of tools and i'm going to discuss each one of them in the next videos that can automate this process for us and make our life easy but for now i hope that you have understood that what are 403 right and how we can bypass it so this is one of the way so this is how we can bypass 403 forbidden. So if you guys have any doubts or any issues at any point of this particular video, then feel free to comment your doubts in the uh, comment section, right? Also, do join our Telegram community where we can discuss many things related to cybersecurity as well as web development or anything that you like, right? Now, there's one thing that I wanted to announce as well that I am currently running two courses. So if you, are, uh, if you like my way of teaching, then you can just go to udemy.com and you can check out my two courses that I'm currently running. So the first one is uh, hacking windows with Python, where I've shown you that how hackers actually hack into web app, uh, sorry, hack into uh, computers by creating their own custom payloads. So you are going to learn how hackers actually create payload that can bypass antiviruses and how we can just obfuscate the payload so that no antivirus can detect it at all. And we can also see how we can bind the payload with different uh, files. Like it, it can be PDF file, it can be anything, right? And the second most interesting course that I'm running is, let me show you once again. 
This course is known as the account takeover course for especially those who are into bug bounties. So if, I, if, you, if you type account takeover, you will be redirected to this page where the first course is mine, Fayaz Ahmed. In this course, I've shown you that how we can actually learn and how we can uh, get an over, overall idea of account takeover vulnerability from zero to hero. You will learn everything related to account takeover from the scratch to the advanced level, like what is account takeover, how we can type div into the application, uh, what are the ways to find account takeover vulnerabilities. We are going to also see some practical examples. We are going to also see some case studies and many interesting things, right? So if you are interested, then go check out these courses and let me know your thoughts on this. Now, with that being said, once again, if you guys have any doubts at any point, then feel free to comment your doubt in the comments comment section right so with that being said thanks for watching and keep being awesome